to Chairman Hall and Ranking Member Johnson for calling this hearing. And, and to the panel, you've done an excellent job of uh, effectively communicating the value of research in Antarctica from the discovery of the ozone hole to saving thousands of babies a year. I also want to point out in Dr. Zapol in your testimony where you talk about uh, monitoring space weather and uh, how space weather can disrupt uh, the proper functioning of communication satellites, GPS systems, electrical power distribution systems, uh, and how the space weather is better viewed from the South Pole than the shifting seas of the North Pole. I, I just wanted to point out, I, I found that extremely compelling as well. Uh, so scientific research and, and technological innovation are very thriving in, in the district. I am uh, proud to represent. Uh, my constituents are keenly aware of the impact of NSF uh, fundamental research dollars. Uh, and uh, I have, a, for example, Oregon State University, Portland State University, my alma mater, the University of Oregon, all have completed research projects through the U.S. Antarctic Program. In fact, the acting director of the Office of Polar Programs at the NSF was previously with Oregon State University. Considering the role of university-based polar research in Oregon and nationally, uh, I, I want you to look ahead to the, the uh, uh, impending across-the-board cuts that would be brought on by the sequester. And I have a question about the, the funding for science versus the funding for logistics, because, Mr. Augustine, you mentioned the, the cruel arithmetic of conducting research in the climate uh, pr uh, presented by the polar region, meaning that if logistics costs rise by 13 percent, the science uh, would be halved. So with that in mind, will you please comment on the impact that the proposed cuts to NSF might have on the future of the, the Antarctic program? considering especially the multiplier effect that Mr. Augustine uh, talked about, would this sequester effectively end the science uh, portion of the, the program? And perhaps, Dr. Suresh, you could begin. I will be happy to address that. So if the worst case scenario that has been uh, proposed materializes, the Office of Management and Budget predicts that NSF budget, along with uh, that of uh, our sister agencies, will science agencies, will suffer about 8.2 percent. So that, if it is across the board, that will, ref that will be reflected in, uh, across NSF. That would mean 1,000 fewer grants will be awarded. We typically give about 13,000 per year, uh, about 1,000 fewer grants per year. Thousands of scientists will be affected. And, and uh, goes back to an earlier question uh, by the ranking member. Uh, it will also discourage a lot of very young people from going into science. This is the future of uh, American leadership in science and engineering, and therefore this is the future of our economic leadership and national security and other issues. And uh, that is the biggest concern. Uh, that is our projection of the worst case scenario of sequestration. Thank you. And I know you have already did you want to talk about that too, Mr. Augustine? I would welcome the chance just briefly, if I might. Uh, if this 8 percent cut that is uh, likely to take place if sequestration occurs, uh, it would have an impact primarily on the science and not the logistics. It would be disproportionate. And the reason for that is that you still have to have an icebreaker. If you have one scientist, you still have to heat the buildings. If you have one scientist, and you have to provide a fuel tanker and so on. So uh, I can imagine the uh, impact on science, and I have never calculated the number, but would be many times the 8 percent. Thank you. And, and with the, the brief time remaining, you did an excellent job of conveying to this committee the importance of the research that you do there. What efforts are you making to convey that to the public? We have a lot of activities in Antarctica from uh, 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 conveying a lot of educational activities which reach not just uh, researchers and uh, undergraduate students, but also school children. We even have an artist in residence program to convey the unique aspects of the excitement of Antarctica to the general public. Um, and uh, uh, there are many, many ways in which this is communicated through uh, videos to supporting um, uh, science programs to uh, communicating to school districts, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Anyone else want to weigh in on efforts? Thank you very much, and I yield back. Thank you.